Hello, hello. I'm super excited that you guys have joined me today. I am here today with Erica Wiederleit, and she is a specialist in burnout. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a second, there's a specialist in this? I know. And here we are today to uncover and unpack some of the simple solutions that we can try in our own businesses. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. This is going to be a really special and needed conversation for everybody. Well, you mentioned that when many people are hitting burnout mode, they get grumpy. And I found not grumpy so much externally because since menopause, I've been really careful. I'm like, I'm so grumpy in my head, but don't let it come out because then you'll have like no friends, right? So I've been trying to like really monitor that, but grumpy in my head. I was cussing in my head and throwing things in my head and just like, ah, And one of the things that I stopped and realized because I didn't have time, I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to make friends. I don't have time for a social life. I just don't have time for any of this stuff. But I started realizing I've got 168 hours in a week. And what am I willing to spend on myself? And I said, okay, if I do all the radical things that I'm going to do, it's going to take me 14 hours a week, Mm -hmm. 14 hours a week. From getting up in the morning to going to the gym and getting dressed at the gym and coming back and doing all the extra things that I'm doing, 14 hours a week. And that includes my morning journaling and my prayer time and all this stuff. Okay, so 14 hours a week. Am I worth 14 hours a week? And if I don't spend that 14 hours a week on myself, am I willing to spend the 14 hours like what? And wasted, frittered away time doing stupid things and being grumpy in my head. Am I worth the 14 hours? And I was like, I'm going to give it a try. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So without making this lifelong commitment, I said, I'll do it for 30 days. And I will check in with myself every day and see how I'm doing. And every day I checked in and part of my 14 hours was 15 minutes a day. I tracked everything. I tracked my steps and my calorie intake and my calorie outtake and how much I burned in my sleep. I tracked everything. And then I tracked, how do I feel on a scale of one to 10? And I tracked myself five times throughout the day. Like, do I feel fantastic? Am I kind of like struggling right now? Am I ornery in my head? And every time I kept coming back to, man, I feel fantastic. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. Would I do it again? Yes, I would. (laughs) So at the end of the 30 days, I'm like, man, I'm on a roll. I'm doing this. I'm going for it, you know. And then it was probably about day six or seven. And I was like, I think I'm completely out of burnout mode. I feel really good. Wow. I feel like I restart myself. Oh, that's so good. That for you, you were like, okay. For me, I knew it was the three things, the rest, the movement, the food. That is so powerful that you leaned on that and you doubled down and you were like, okay, I know this is my particular medicine, elixir that gets me out of the burnout and you stay committed to that. That's amazing. It's a long time in the works. I mean, I wish I could say that, oh, like, hey, I just stumbled upon the solutions. I didn't. I've been rotating burnout for 30 years. Yeah. Right. I've been trying to find the solutions for 30 years. Yeah. And my hope in this conversation is that we don't have to have people wait 30 years to find some simple solutions because right now is a frustrating time of the year and the house cleaning industry, it's tough. It's a lot of physical energy and it's an ungrateful profession in many instances. Mm -hmm. You go to a customer's house, you clean their house and it looks amazing. And there's nobody to tell you that it looks amazing. They're gone. They're not at home. And then You did your best work and then like you never hear back from them and you're like, did I do a good job? There's no feedback. And then you kind of start to self-doubt yourself. Like, I'm not sure if what I'm doing is good enough or if it works. That's the reward at the end. It's kind of like you're left wondering, hey, are you happy? Right. And that's what's so powerful that you created those things. You know, I think that's a big part of this conversation too. It's the best when someone's like, I see you. I'm validating you. Thank you. And like you said, in this profession, sometimes you don't get it. And it's this dangly energy. We, like, we didn't complete the cycle. Like, how'd I do? How was it? And what's so powerful about what you're talking about with your practice, and I encourage all of us to think about that, right? Like, that's your formula. Maybe we could start to take that on. Maybe for someone else, it's journaling or prayer or booking a free session, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I love that because you resource yourself. So who wouldn't want the compliment? We still want that. It still feels great to be seen and to be validated, But you doing the work, not only is it combating the burnout, but it's also being like, I'm good. I still want it, but I'm good. I'm proud of myself. You know, like you still feel internally 
taken care of. And our time is up for today. It's just zipped right by. And I want to say thanks to all of you guys that have showed up today. But please, Erica, tell our listeners where they can go to find you. Of course. And please, please, please come to find me. I love this conversation. There's so much more to talk about. As we talked about before, you can find me on my website, which is wethelight.org. You can hit me an email, keep the conversation going because you've really created such a special space and we all need to be held in this. So thank you for having me. I'm just so jazzed that we can continue this conversation off of this platform. So thank you. Thank you.